Hi, welcome to NES222. This is a Jupyter Notebook. These are called cells. You can see there's green and blue cells. The green cells are executable Python code. The blue cells are markdown. You can get into the actual editing syntax by double clicking. And you can see here some markdown, some HTML, and some LaTeX or LaTeX and a reference to a graphic file. We want to run the kernel so that we want to run all these cells sequentially at the very beginning of looking at any kind of Jupyter Notebook. All right, so we're ready to go. What's the goal of this course? To find patterns in the data. It's based upon the Fourier transform. We're going to be looking at an algorithm called the fast Fourier transform. So we're going to be writing Python code using C plus or Fortran code. It's already been written. And then we're going to be perhaps designing circuits using this algorithm. We're going to start off with four numbers and ask the question, how many possible patterns are there through four numbers? Scrolling down, we can see a pattern that's a straight line that's possible through four numbers that are identical. 1, 0, minus 1, and 0 is another pattern. Our patterns are constrained to being sinusoids, particularly cosine function. Here we can see 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, and that creates a two-cycle pattern. So if we're constrained to a cosine function, we can have a straight line, one cosine cycle through the data, two cosine cycles through the data, three cosine cycles, there's 1, 2, 3 through the data. But this one's a little bit odd because it's not the minimal path. The blue line's not the minimal path through the data. And we already saw this 1, 0, minus 1, 1 up here. 1, 0, minus 1, 0. The same dots, but we're weaving a different blue cosine function through them. It's not the minimal. And when do we start over? Patterns repeat themselves in time, and we have to be able to determine when they start over. So when we see the straight line again, we start over. We don't try to draw another or match another cosine pattern to them. So this is the FFT. The next question we ask is, how do we determine the pattern strength? So is a straight line is going to have a strength. The one cycle through the data is going to have a strength. Two cycles through the data is going to have a magnitude or strength. Same with three. So reverse engineering, we're going to look at the FFT. And we're going to feed it in four ones. That's our data. And it's going to say, yes, that's a straight line. There's nothing for one cycle, nothing for two cycles, and nothing for three cycles. Then we're going to feed it in the 1, 0, minus 1 pattern. If you remember, that matched twice. We drew two, we drew one cycle through the data, and then we drew three cycles through the data. So the FFT is detecting both of those possible patterns through that set of data. And then we have the alternating 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. And it says, yeah, that's two cycles through the data. That's this picture. And then you can see this fifth pattern doesn't exist. So for four numbers in our input data, we get four possible patterns. So now let's choose some different input data that might have multiple patterns in it. 
and let's choose one that where we add up all these numbers together. So just arbitrarily we take 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and get 4. 1 plus 0 plus a minus 1 plus 0 is 0. In fact, the rest of them are 0. And this actually looks like a spike in our data. And it triggers all possible patterns. Now, eventually, we're going to be dealing with thousands of data points in our input, or millions. So we've got to figure out how to build a circuit, how to write this, this code in Python so we can see what's going on and customize it and use C++ and Fortran compiled code that already exists and get it to run without locking the computer up for a week. This last code chunk enables us to play with between 4 and 100 random numbers and look at the patterns that the FFT discovers in them. Here we see 52 random numbers and 52 possible patterns in them. Here we see four random numbers. Here's another four random numbers. Here's another four random numbers. Here's another four random numbers and the patterns possible in them. The patterns all have this straight line that's usually the largest magnitude. Then there's a center and about the center you find equals. So the next classes are all going to be about reverse engineering this FFT. And we start off by looking at the relationship between patterns and imaginary numbers.